Welcome to a special edition of Fresh Natural Life. Uh, I want to come on tonight to talk to you about um, uh, an individual who's been trending, uh, Kevin Samuels, as many of you uh, who follow uh, YouTube trenders and gurus uh, know that uh, Kevin Samuels, who's a self-appointed relationship guru, uh, died suddenly. He was uh, uh, reportedly had a cardiac arrest yesterday. And the reason I'm coming on, I normally don't comment on individuals in this area. I'm a health expert, uh, but I think there's an obvious story here that we're all overlooking. And uh, that's the story of a health issue. Um, Kevin Samuels reportedly was 57 years old and died suddenly uh, yesterday. And I think there's much to be discussed about the health narrative. And I wanna come on and share uh, my thoughts and insights with you uh, regarding this uh, unfortunate and tragic loss. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to get into this discussion in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. And uh, fortunate uh, and unexpected, I would say, death of Kevin Samuels, uh, uh, I think a pretty well-known uh, online personality. He had 1.4 million followers, and you know, he was a self-appointed um, uh, relationship guru and advisor and counselor, to my understanding. And actually, I've seen some of his shows now. I'm not going to get into the controversial aspect of the type of things he said, what he said about women and so on. There's a lot of commentary about that online, but I want to address the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that this man was 57 years old and died suddenly. And the other part of the elephant in the room is that um, not too many people are talking about that aspect of things. It's almost like we've become numb over individuals uh, this age dying suddenly. Uh, but I think there's some things that we need to uh, uh, pay attention to, especially in the context of this unfortunate death. Now, you know, we see, we, I'm sure we all know of individuals who died in their 50s and 40s and 60s, uh, and we see this every day. I want to take the opportunity uh, to discuss this concept in the context of all the attention that, that this unfortunate death is getting. Because one thing we have to understand is that human life expectancy should be somewhere on the order of 120 years old. And we see individuals who die suddenly in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, as a cardiologist, I know that sudden cardiac death is the number one way in which you die uh, from heart disease. In fact, individuals with heart disease, about 40% uh, of the time, their first presenting symptom is sudden cardiac arrest. So just, just think about that. So many people walk around with heart disease. Frequently, the first symptom you have is you drop dead. And so that's a harsh way to go. So I think we need to give some thought to this. And I want to dive into some of the details of why this is something that we must all consider and we need to look at the underlying, uh, potential underlying causes of this. But before I get into that, I wanna invite you to give us a thumbs up, thumbs up, uh, share this information. Uh, I think there's an important discussion for all of us to have. So if you're on live, share this with a friend or loved one. Uh, if you're seeing this by recording later on, share this with a friend or loved one, because I'm gonna hit some very important points um, uh, in this situation and as we examine the unfortunate, uh, tragic death of Kevin Samuels. So um, the other thing, uh, also share and subscribe if you hadn't had time to. So let's look at cardiovascular disease and, and, and let's examine the potential prevalence of cardiovascular disease. Now, many of you who have heard me talk about this subject before 
uh, you've heard me talk about um, the prevalence of cardiovascular disease. Now, if we think about the potential prevalence of cardiovascular disease, we can look at uh, certain autopsy data uh, that is you know, publicly known. Uh, and so they've done autopsy studies on 14 to 16 year old kids who've died from tragic accidents such as motor vehicle accidents or the like. And when they examined their heart, they found uh, some uh, reports have found up to 65% of them have fatty streaks or early atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries. Um, in 1953, I recall the study being done uh, looking at American soldiers who had died in the Korean War from traumatic injuries, uh, and they found around 77, almost 78% of them had gross um, atherosclerotic plaque or coronary disease, and that average age there was 22. So from 14 to 16-year-old, about a 65% prevalence, and in the 22-year-old group, there was about a prevalence of approximately almost 80%. You can only extrapolate as the ages get higher the prevalence of coronary disease, especially in individuals who are living a standard American life. It's virtually universal. So if you take the population you know, with the universal prevalence of coronary disease, then you say, okay, you know, there's a big risk of someone having a heart attack or sudden cardiac arrest uh, for no apparent reason. So let's try to take that background data and let's apply it to what we know about Kevin Sanders. I don't know his health issues or, or, or et cetera. I know some things about it and I'll share that with you, some things that were shared online. But if we just look at him externally and you've seen uh, pictures of him and, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up a picture of Kevin Samuels and uh, I'm going to share my screen with you because i think you know for those of you who don't know him it's worth um taking a look and seeing who we're talking about so here's uh kevin samuels he's uh as you can see he's a lean young man uh young man young looking us uh, is a young man he's 57 i'm 58 so he's a young man uh and uh and 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 cindy m taylor uh says he looked really fit and I think that's uh, that's uh, a really important point. Now, Cindy Taylor raised another point we're going to get to in just a minute earlier on. But I just want to just uh, take a look and say this man looked very fit. Uh, so you can surmise that he probably exercised. You know, there's some you know bicep activity here, lean, um, a mean fitness machine. Uh, and so on the surface, you wouldn't uh, imagine that he'd be someone who's at risk for dying. Uh, suddenly from a cardiac arrest. Uh, he doesn't look like someone who you would think would have heart disease at all. But if we look at back at what we know, uh, he also has a history of uh, non-Hodgkin's, excuse me, I think it's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma at the age of 21. Uh, he beat it. I think he was treated with uh, chemotherapy. Uh, Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is commonly treated uh, with chemotherapy, and I just pulled up uh, another little um, uh, educational piece here. Uh, we're not going to get into this, but just to share with you, uh, Hodgkin's uh, uh, lymphoma has uh, different stages. Uh, you have stage one, uh, where it's not spread as extensively. Uh, stage two, this means one of the following lymphomas in uh, two or more groups of lymph nodes. Uh, your lymphoma is in an extra nodal site in one or more groups. So basically, the stages determine how uh, extensive it is. This means that you have lymphoma on both sides of the diaphragm, this is above and below. Uh, and so he had stage three, meaning he had lymphoma above and below the diaphragm. Uh, and he received uh, uh, the treatment for stage three Hodgkin lymphoma. It's generally between six to eight cycles of chemotherapy. Uh, you might get steroids and the like. So I thought I'd just share that with you because that was uh, what he was diagnosed at the age of 21. Now, we want to step back and say, okay, well, what is Hodgkin lymphoma diagnosis at the age of you know, 21 have anything to do with him dying suddenly at the age of 57? Well, if we think of disease states you know, from a global perspective, 
and you know some of his underlying metabolic processes that are uh, imbalanced. Uh, if we lump these disease states together, we could say, well, he had a biochemical metabolic imbalance that manifested as cancer early on. He received chemotherapy, which can also have side effects, adverse effects on the liver, adverse effects on the heart and the coronary disease, coronary arteries rather. And so you could lead to long chronic problems. Now, um, could there have been a recurrence of cancer that had not been diagnosed that could have led to the formation of a blood clot? You know, oftentimes we know patients with a history of cancer can have a recurrence of cancer in a remote setting. It could be uh, a different cancer. And so we have a condition known as perineoplastic syndrome, where in a para, meaning, you know, along with a neoplastic cancer, something, a syndrome that's along with cancer. And frequently blood clot formation can be associated with, you know, an undiagnosed cancer or a diagnosed cancer. And in that situation, if there's a blood clot in the lower extremities, they can go to the, the lungs uh, and cause sudden death. So this sudden cardiac arrest or sudden death could, you know, be related to that. An autopsy could uh, be revealing. Uh, and so this is another thing we can consider in, in this situation. But also coronary disease, heart disease is still number one in terms of the cause of death. And anyone living a standard uh, lifestyle, uh, the standard American diet, et cetera, or have a high prevalence of heart disease and therefore a high prevalence of sudden death. I want to also remind you that we've also talked about this on our show where the um, actuarial uh, specialists and life insurance companies have reported a 40% increase in the death of individuals between the ages of 19 and also uh, between the age of 19 and 68, uh, excuse me, 69. Uh, and that 40% increase, a 10% increase from one year to the other will be astronomical. This is four times astronomical. So, uh, Kevin Samuels is in that group, that population. Actually, it's, it's from 19, from 18 to 64. I apologize, from 18 to 64. He's in that population. So we're seeing an increased amount of death in individuals in his age group, more so than we would normally see. And so that's something else that we must consider. And we have to look at our lifestyle, look at other things that have been happening recently related to the pandemic, et cetera, and, and give some consideration as to you know, what the overall reasons for these increased deaths are, you know, was his death part of that? Uh, but cardiac disease, in my opinion, still stands high. Sudden cardiac death is the most common cause of cardiac, uh, of, 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 of dying in general. And, and, and in cardiac arrhythmia or heart attack is the most common cause of dying from heart disease. And so we have to consider these very high. Now, I want to take you back to uh, see, Cindy M. Taylor says he talked about he did a lot of biking. So, again, he exercised a lot. He looked fit. Uh, but I want to bring you something else that Cindy said. And Cindy, you're all over today. Uh, Cindy said that he drank Red Bulls on every live show. Now, many of you are familiar with Red Bulls. Um, it's, a, it's a high energy drink. Uh, and they're, it's one of a number of high energy drinks. I can't think of the names of others, but these uh, high energy drinks uh, have lots of caffeine in them. Uh, they have other stimulants sometimes, uh, and uh, they can be problematic if they're consumed with alcohol. I do recall in some of his, his, his uh, shots, there's alcohol in the background. I don't know if he's drinking alcohol along with it. Uh, I can't say one or the other, but uh, that's something that we should also consider. Let me share uh, my screen with a little article that talks about um, these sports energy drinks uh, with you. So here's an article uh, that talks about sports energy drinks and sudden cardiac death, the stimulant cardiac syndrome. So uh, recently it detected that an unexplained cardiac arrest in some individuals developed after consuming energy drinks, particularly simultaneous with alcohol intake. Uh, it is known that several stimulants are included in the formulas of different energy drinks. More credible is the argument that energy drinks affect the cardiovascular system, uh, cardiovascular conduction system, and lead to catastrophic event, events such as lethal arrhythmias. 
this is something that's been known uh, for some time, even just, you know, drinking coffee, we know it can predispose to arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, or the like. Uh, if you have metabolic imbalances, um, you know, you're drinking alcohol, maybe have some other toxic foods in your system uh, that increases inflammation, oxidative stress, and those you saw my last discussion last week, where I talked about uh, the increase in oxidative stress uh, and inflammation. And, and these can have mechanisms by which they cause is the in, uh, influx of calcium inside the heart cells. It causes arrhythmias. Uh, it causes contractile dysfunction or weakness of the heart muscle. So these are some of the things that you can get with food, some of these supplements, some of these toxins that we're putting in our systems and thinking a little of it. And these substances, they seem very benign. You know, an energy drink, okay, give myself a little boost to wake up, you know, be alert, uh, or maybe have, you know, a taco sandwich or a hot dog, all of these things can contribute to increased inflammation. Uh, and it can also contribute to arrhythmias, especially if you have an underlying uh, cardiac condition. So um, I think it's important for us to, to, to give some thought to this. And the tragedy uh, of this, again, you know, it's tragic when anyone dies, but uh, a young man who was physically fit, Cindy points out that he <clears throat> talked about biking a lot, uh, uh, it seems. Um, uh, now somebody's asking questions about, you know, did he take the vacation? Uh, I don't know if he took the vacation. Uh, Jackie wanted to know if he take the vacation. The vacation's a code word for another word that's thought to be, I'm not going to mention. Um, and so, uh, I think it's something that, um, uh, Jackie mentioned carnitine supplements and, uh, TMAO and certainly animal protein consumers will have a high TML, which predisposes to cardiovascular events, uh, predisposed to inflammation. But the take home messages are the following. One, this is a young man is very tragic. Uh, he was physically fit. He was lean. So when we talk about things like obesity causing these things and all of that. Uh, no, it's not obesity and so on. It's metabolic imbalances, inflammation. You have that if you're obese, you have that if you're skin or if you're skinny, you have that you're lean and fit. It goes to your lifestyle uh, and, and how you are nourishing your body. Uh, if you're putting toxic chemicals in your body, it doesn't matter how much you exercise, how much you run, or how fit you look, uh, you're going to succumb to a cardiac event or one of these other chronic illnesses. So it's important as we talk about, talk about you know, health and health journey. Many of you in our community, if you're not, uh, go to MontgomeryHeart.com forward slash journey. That's MontgomeryHeart.com forward slash journey and consider joining our community. I'll talk more about this uh, in a Q&A session in our community. But um, this is a very tragic death, but we have to understand that he was a very young man. And, and this is something that should shock all of us. And the fact that it doesn't shock all of us, the fact that most people are talking about, you know, aspects of his personality and how he treated women. I understand, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's stories to be discussed there as well. But I think the most obvious, the most shocking uh, story is that uh, he was a young man. He died suddenly of a cardiac arrest. And this is something that we now consider as part of the norm. So let me uh, know what you think in the chat. I'm not going to be on long. I'll sign off. But um, those of you in the community, uh, I will uh, touch base on this later. Uh, and, and maybe we'll have like an open discussion Q&A uh, with you in the community. So those of you um, uh, are interested in joining the Montgomery Heart Wellness community, I think it's worth uh, taking a look at our site, montgomeryheart.com forward slash journey and learn about our different communities on our private sector where you can get more insight on topics like this. So I hope uh, you all are well. I hope you all have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you uh, this coming Monday. Uh, I'll be posting that show topic this weekend. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and until then, keep it fresh, natural, and live. Mm -hmm.